So let's talk about this one. Cute little atoms, little elements. Okay. So when we talk about an atom, and later on soon, we'll talk about kind of try to put how big is an atom, kind of put, try to sink our teeth into how, how big or how small an atom really is. But if you have an atom, uh, um, basically you have all that you need to describe the elements. An atom has all of the properties of that given element. And it's funny because definitely here in, in this material we're talking about elements and atoms. We're going to talk about, of course, atoms have a nucleus in the center and they have electrons around the nucleus. We'll be talking about that, the structure of an atom. Okay. So I'm bringing in this table again. I don't think you necessarily have this table. We looked at this. Um, how do you like classify matter? Okay. Well, matter can either be a pure substance or it can be a mixture. And we talked about two different types of mixtures. But if it's a pure substance, okay, the options are that matter, if it's pure, it's either element or it's a compound. And we said actually you can go back and forth. You can take elements and build them up into compounds, okay, using a chemical, C-H-M-R-X-N, a chemical reaction. You can take compounds and break them back down into the elements with another chemical reaction. But here's the deal. You cannot take an element, you cannot take an element and break it down any further into something smaller with ordinary chemical means. Okay, you cannot make it smaller. All right. So I brought your first, this periodic table is the same one as you have um, like in your packets. Okay. And this is the periodic table that you will get, clean periodic table for, yes, it's the same one exactly. You will get a periodic table for your test and this is what I will have. <laughs> They're just cleverly. Okay. So you guys know that each of those boxes is an element. And sometimes um, in some intro uh, chemistry classes, the teacher will make you memorize things. And I'm going to tell you which ones I want you to know. Basically connect. Like if I said that the symbol C, what element is that? Exactly. The symbol N, what element is that? Nitrogen. Nitrogen, yeah. So those are, like, I want you to be able to do some of those. Yep, yep. So symbols, actually, and sometimes students will say, all right, Mrs. Snipes, um, iron, iron, I-R-O-N, the symbol for iron is F-E. You're like, really? What the heck? And... It, you can look it up on the internet, but usually those come from Latin names. So a few things about the symbols you probably already know. Um, it could be one or two letters. If it is two letters, like copper, if it is two letters, you have to go with a capital letter for the first one and a lowercase letter for the second letter with, for that same element. A good example is cobalt. So, for instance, cobalt is two letters, capital C, lowercase o. The problem is if you don't follow that rule, this is cobalt, okay, but this is carbon monoxide. Monoxide, something like that, okay. So it makes a difference. You're case sensitive. What's the symbol for sodium? I think you already have it, N-A. It's not capital A, it's capital N, lowercase a. Iron is Fe, potassium is K. I always think potassium K for special K. I think bananas. Bananas, yeah, they have a lot of potassium. I don't know why that relates to K, but I <laughs> think of the kind of the, how, a, how a banana is shaped, maybe it kind of looks like a K. Uh, we don't have any, neither does uh, Mr. Salee, a microscope that can actually look at individual atoms. It gets complicated, as you might imagine. But if we zoom in on copper, 
we can actually, with a scanning electron microscope, actually get a sense for where the atoms are. Again, we don't have one of these sort of microscope, but you can kind of see a texture to the atoms. The atoms are arranged, in this case, in a solid state. Um, when we talk about um, atoms, some of the things, and I'm not going to animate this because it doesn't do much, but this is an atom. That's one big atom. Okay, the thing in the center is a nucleus, and you can kind of see the two colors. In the nucleus, we have the protons and the neutrons. And then what are, what's that buzzing sort of? What's this out here? The electrons, exactly. Okay, I mentioned that because to me, if you look, and we're going to try to put that in perspective, oh my gosh, it is amazing, relatively speaking, how small the nucleus is and how much basically the electron cloud makes the volume of an atom. So when I look at this sort of egg carton looking thing up here with uh, um, the copper atoms, I kind of think as those are kind of electrons. Those are kind of like electron clouds kind of making the shape of those atoms. I think that is so cool. So I have some slides on um, different ways to look at all of these elements, okay? This is so cool. Um, matter is made up of atoms and atoms of different elements. And um, all of the matter in the universe, all the matter in this room, all the matter of this earth, the solar system, this universe, actually can be broken down in these different elements. Now we are making more and more, not we, but somebody, is making more and more heavier elements. I'll kind of, kind of draw your attention to this part right here. And it's a big hairy deal. I will warn you though that when they make these elements, um, they say they discover them, but actually they make them. They aren't very stable, so that kind of is a tricky thing. But um, if we were to look at the entire universe, which by the way, we've seen gravity waves now, or scientists have seen gravity waves that show the existence of a black, black hole. Um, when we look at the universe, hydrogen is most abundant. Um, when we look at the Earth's atmosphere, nitrogen is most abundant. Okay. When we look at Earth's crust, oxygen is most abundant. And one of the things we talk about in Earth science is that um, the reason oxygen is associated with Earth's crust, you're like, really? Well, the thing about oxygen is it's very reactive. And so early on when basically oxygen was starting to kind of come about as, as part of Earth's atmosphere because of the activity of plants and photosynthesis, that first oxygen was just kind of gobbled up into Earth's crust. And then it actually, once it kind of ran out of sites to react with, then oxygen started to build up in our atmosphere, which is important for animals. So this is a pie chart of the elements in the universe. So most of it's hydrogen, uh, followed up by helium in the universe. Now as I look around this room thinking of the atoms that make the matter in this room, I don't really see helium. <laughs> I see some hydrogen. Um, uh, organic chemistry deals with kind of almost getting to biomolecules, but in organic chemistry, um, I just put it this way, life is made up of a lot of carbon, um, a lot of hydrogen, and some oxygen basically. That's what our biomolecules are. Some nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, um, but no helium. <laughs> anyway, so this is how it goes in the universe. That just amazes me. Makes me feel special. This is Earth's crust again. We said that oxygen is the most abundant element. If you were to basically break down Earth's crust into piles of atoms, you'd have mostly oxygen, followed by silicon and then um, aluminum. This one is the most disturbing to me. And actually, I've gone on um, the internet before and pulled up a YouTube video of a nursing and, uh, nursing student talking about how you could take the body, human body, and distill it down into piles of different elements. Kind of disgusting. Yes. So our human body um, is mostly oxygen, okay, followed by carbon and then hydrogen. That's got to be really exciting. Um. I don't know. That could be. Water, of course, would be oxygen and hydrogen. So I don't think that throws it out. But this is taking the water and breaking it down. 
Okay, some other kind of interesting facts about elements. There are a few gases. Um, we're going to talk about kind of, we're going to talk about how important this is. And I want to go like this. So basically, in my mind, I have a periodic table in front of me, and I'm basically kind of lining up those elements. Um, the noble gases, as some of you guys may know, actually are the last column. So look at the periodic table, and this will be the last column. Okay. Um, some more gases. Now we're going to talk more about this. I think, I think we already did talk about this. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. You guys would tell me the symbol for hydrogen is H. Well, honestly, if you're dealing with hydrogen, you're not going to just write an H. You're going to, and I have a slide coming up, you're going to probably write an H with a little subscript too, showing that hydrogen never wants to be alone. It basically runs around as a hydrogen molecule. Oxygen the same way, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine the same way. They're part of the diatomic elements. Uh -huh. So those are gases. We only have two liquids. Doesn't that make you feel special if you're a liquid element? Now again, I should say we only have two liquids under normal earth temperatures and normal earth pressures. If you have a liquid and you want to get it to a solid, all you got to do is go to a planet where it's colder. <laughs> okay. And or if you have a liquid and you want it to solidify, um, depending upon how it works, there's a good chance you can just increase the pressure and it will solidify. So there is that. So we have bromine, which is um, next to the last column. Okay. And we have, of course, liquid mercury. Bromine is also a diatomic element. I have a little subscript too there. And everything else, solids. Again, solids under normal earth temperatures and earth pressures. Okay, if you want something to go from a solid to a liquid, you heat it up. Go from a liquid to a gas, you heat it up. Okay, so you go to another planet, um, which is kind of interesting. We'll be talking about um, these terms. I don't know if we'll get to them today or on Monday. But all elements uh, can be categorized as either metal or nonmetal or a metalloid. I'll kind of talk about that coming up. But uh, everything else is a solid. So, yeah, diatomic elements, there are seven of them. And they like to, like I said, buddy up. So, hydrogen is an example of a diatomic element, oxygen, nitrogen. There are seven of them. And they run around as what we call a molecule. So, we have to go ahead, when it says we use formulas to represent these, that just means we have to uh, go ahead and use a subscript too. Okay? So for instance, the well, formula of water, you guys would tell me, is H2O. That's a water molecule. What does that mean? It means I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, so when we do a formula for nitrogen, N subscript 2, what does that mean? It means we have two nitrogens. That's it. So here they are actually listed by increasing weight, I believe. This is not my favorite way. There's seven of them. My favorite way, I feel like I told you this, so if I did, just bear with me. My favorite way is actually to remember a German name, Hofbernickel, which I don't even know if there's a German name like that. But you spell it out, H-O-F, Burr is B-R, Burr, N-I-C-L, Hofbernickel. And if you do that, you have the seven diatomic elements. So hydrogen is a diatomic element, oxygen, diatomic, fluorine, diatomic, bromine, diatomic, nitrogen, diatomic, iodine, diatomic, chlorine, diatomic, hofbernickel. I don't know if I kept it, but you know it's funny how you keep things. You're like, oh, that was so neat. So like years ago um, when I was a freshman in college, um, I got a little card that said hofbernickel from my chemistry teacher. It's like, oh, that's funny. I think it's somewhere in one of my keepsakes. <laughs> So here's the diatomic elements, where they are on the periodic table. Notice that a lot of them are group 7, group 7A. Okay, remember I said that 
this one right here, this is group 7A. Um, I said that it's kind of all about, it's all about this. This is so important because this is like actually, um, they all behave similarly. So a lot of them are diatomic elements. Um, we have a few kind of early on in what we call period two. Okay. Now, before I forget, that peri grab that periodic table I gave you. Do you guys find hydrogen on it? Okay, hydrogen is on there twice, and it's not a mistake. It's actually on purpose. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Hydrogen is on there twice because sometimes hydrogen behaves like these guys, okay? And sometimes hydrogen behaves like these guys. That's why it's on there twice. Okay. Not a mistake. Although I do make mistakes. <laughs> okay, so I told you, um, I'll even put the nasty word memorize. I, d I don't memorize. What are you supposed to memorize? Name and symbol. I hesitate to say, make a big deal out of this, because your next unit exam will have more than just memorizing these, okay? But these are listed, you're like, 20, what the heck is 20? Well, if you grab your periodic table and try to find what I call the whole number 20, that's calcium. Okay, so calcium is an example of you need to know calcium is CA. You're like, okay, let's pick another one, another one. 86. You're like, 86, what's 86? Somebody find 86 for me. There it is. It's RN. And that's radon, actually. Okay? So that's another one. You need to memorize the symbol and the name. While we're at it, actually, is there another one coming up? I never know what order to explain this in, but while I'm at it, one more thing. So if you take this, do you see where it goes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14 through 18, 19, 20, then it goes all the way through 36, okay? So those numbers are the number of protons. You know, we talked about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Those numbers are the number of protons. We call it the atomic number. We'll be talking more about that. But the periodic table is arranged like that, okay? Now I'm gonna have to kind of, let's just for kicks, find 57, Element number, what we call atomic 57, 57 protons is lanthan, lanthanum, okay? Now notice on the periodic table I gave you, it skips from 57 to 72. You're like, dude, where did those elements go? Where they went was right down here. So it goes 57, 58, 59, 60, blah, 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 71, and then it goes back up to here. So kind of the, this row is inserted right there. And this row is inserted right there. Did they just do that to save room? They didn't do it to, well, yeah, kind of. They do it to save room? Sort of. Um, they did it uh, to actually kind of show that these are similar down here, and these are kind of similar here. But, but they, did, they did do it kind of to save room. <laughs> um, so, I wonder if... I'm going to go ahead and kind of digress. I'm going to save the next few slides. Before we go, I want to show you guys this. I think this is cool. So you guys know that to, in order to kind of, if you want to stay connected to this class, you can check out the Twitter feed. On the Twitter feed just this afternoon or this morning, what I did, you guys are right here, Chem122, I added a link for this periodic table. Okay, so this periodic table, it's called P-table. Um, of course, you need to be on the internet to get there. It's uh, related to, associated with Wikipedia. But if you're looking for kind of gizmos to kind of, kind of look around, you might check this out on the internet. I really like P-table because also it's on my iPad. There's an iPad and Android app you can download. Okay, it's free. But... Um, We'll be talking about some of these things. For instance, I thought it would be fun to go ahead 
and let's see if it does this for me. Okay. You're like, oh my gosh, look at that. I really don't. This is uh, the state. I, I'm going to click on Discovered, okay, and I'm going to back down to, see the slider right here? Basically, this is the earliest, and this is current day, when, when they were discovered. So right here, for instance, it's emphasizing Discover just because of this radial dial right here. I picked it. Okay, I just thought that was kind of cool. So early on, when was iron discovered? 2000 BC, right? Um, so the ones that are highlighted are the very early ones. Then I can go ahead and do the slider, and you can start to get a sense for when were these elements discovered. One of the things in science um, I wish I could kind of instill in everybody is a little bit of awe in that how far we've come, how much we take for granted, okay? Elements had to be discovered before they could be used to make gizmos, for instance. You know, if you've ever watched, I think I might have mentioned in lab, the, um, the what's that show where they make things? The, how it's made? Yeah, how it's made. I just am amazed. And, you know, I, I think we all should be. So that's kind of how that works. We could go ahead and slide. You can see them start to filling in. We're going to do in lab, probably on Thursday, um, a lab that emphasizes the periodic table. And we're going to talk about Dmitriev Mendeleev, Dmitriev, Dmitriev Mendeleev, his last name is Mendeleev, and how he actually assembled the periodic table. And it's just amazing. Kind of assembled in the periodic table is um, a language of chemistry. The other thing while I'm at it is that later on, I can't remember which unit it is. For instance, we're going to be talking about electrons, and as some of you has, have kind of dealt with, if you've had chemistry before, you know that not all electrons are created equal, and we kind of be talking about how electrons around an atom are setting, what we call configured. This actually can show you how those electrons are configured. I'm not saying you should use this for your homework, but you can use this to knock out your homework. Oh, boy. Um, isotopes, we'll be talking more about that. I like, um, I like this website, this p-table, because if you want, for instance, to know the formula for methane, okay, type it in, and hopefully it's right there methane. And it's connected to Wikipedia. It will take you out to Wikipedia. Okay. Um, again, you shouldn't necessarily use this uh, as a crutch for your homework, but you can definitely use it to, um, to help your homework out. Cool. Okay. Well, that's how far I wanted to get today. So there's no homework assignment. We'll pick up with the elements on Monday. Okay.